Hey there everyone, welcome back to a new week here on the Aussie Lawn. Uh, I had a different video in mind for this week, but at the last minute I've actually changed the uh, the plans a little bit. I was going to give the green a break and do some other filming content, but I've had a little wander around on it this morning. This is the first day that I've actually seen it in daylight for a couple of days due to work commitments. And I've noticed a few things, uh, some early signs of dry patch and I thought I'd share that with you and we might do the video today or we will do the video today on uh, soil wetters so I'll be spraying out some HydroLink Advance and we'll talk about it and uh, I'll show you something else that happened the other day that I, I actually did to the green um, so yeah all right look let me spin the camera around and I'll talk to you about dry patch and some of the early signs okay so I've had a wander around this morning you can see the footprints there it's been a fairly dewy kind of a morning. Now you'll notice, you might not have noticed, up the back corner here, there seems to be an area that, that doesn't have any dew on it. This is a prime example of uh, the very early stages of, of a, a drier area. And I know for a fact that this corner is a dry area anyway, but it's a good, probably a good, uh, good tip for you guys with your home lawns. On a dewy morning, uh, on a dewy situation, and you can see, if there's no dew on a patch, okay, it's a pretty good sign that the soil there's a little bit drier than elsewhere. And I thought to myself, well, this is a great opportunity to put out some uh, some soil wetter in the HydroLink Advance. Uh, haven't actually had a chance to mow this green for a couple of days now. Uh, again, as I said, to work commitments. So yeah, so I will get quite a bit of grass off this, I'm sure. It looks long, um, but I'll show you what I did the other day, which yeah, probably wasn't one of the best decisions. Righto. So over here, how do I, yeah, there we go. Over here you'll notice something a bit weird going on. Some weird scalping and, and so forth. That may have been uh, me driving a Land Cruiser across there. <laughs> well, it was me backing a Land Cruiser through there with a trailer. I'm getting a new uh, slow combustion wood heater installed at home and it needed to come across and back along this concrete here behind me so i made the decision you can see the box in the corner there uh made the decision to just clip across the corner of the green so i have since um i have since i'll do it like that i have since put the fork and sort of pulled it back out but it did it did scalp after the first mow um Unfortunately, look, not the smartest move, but uh, my hands were a little bit tied. The wood heater was 200 kilos plus a flu kit, and trying to rope in some mates to carry that any further than they had to was never going to happen. So, left us another little, a little area to work on. Uh, probably looks worse on camera than it is, um, but we're going to give it a mow today. I have forked it and sort of done the best I can without top dress. Top dress would sort this out in a heartbeat. Uh, so anyway, let's. Uh, I'm going to run the mower over this now, we'll get some grass off it and um, we'll work on this HydroLink Advance. We are supposedly got some, got some rain coming later today so I'm going to look at the radar in a moment see how far away that is. If I can get away with um, spraying this out just before the rain hits then I don't have to irrigate it because as per the label irrigation amount after application is about uh, six, I think four to six or six to ten millimetres of uh, irrigation uh, after application or shortly thereafter. Uh, it's less detrimental to get it straight irrigated if the temperatures are less than 30 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, and I don't think we're gonna hit 30 here today. So we'll, we'll just have a look at the radar, see where this rain is. Um, I'm pretty in tune with my local weather. I sort of know where our rain comes from and, and uh, how how far away it is. So that's probably a good tip for you guys too. Get, get to know your local your local weather patterns get to know where your rain comes from um, one of the apps on my phone is the bureau Meteor bureau of meteorology uh, radar where i can uh, get a good feel i know most of my rain uh, comes from behind me there northwest uh, so i know if anything comes over those mountains there in the background that we're going to get a bit of rain out of it we don't get a great deal from the south uh, yeah so anyway look let's crack on with this uh with this mow and hey. 
Right, I've even managed to change clothes in that time. Um, I just thought if I'm going to spray, just chuck some jeans and a shirt on. Um, don't want it getting over uh, better clothes. Got a lot of grass off that. Let's um, have a look in the catcher. That was, what was that? Three days of growth. You can see behind me now, it's really starting to cover over. It's starting to look really good apart from that particular corner. <laughs> and uh, this little bit behind me in the mole. Where are we? Can't find it, can't find it. That little bit there. All right, let's have a look in this catcher. Right, so this catcher's actually uh, nearly full. There you go, so that's um, what three days, three days of growth looks like. Um, so there's quite, there's quite a bit there, there's one, one full catcher. Actually going to hit this with a PGR, plant growth regulator. It's going to slow it down a little bit. It's still going to help it sort of uh, tiller roll, not tiller so much, but still help it to thicken up a little bit, but it's not going to uh, send it into a huge growth spurt. It's going to slow that growth spurt down, I should say. Because um, at the moment, if it keeps growing at that rate, I'm going to be uh, getting me in a little bit of trouble in the future. So I'm going to slow it down a little bit with the PGR. It's not going to do much other than slow it down and uh, it'll make it a little bit easier um, especially now the afternoons or the evenings are getting darker that little bit earlier so I'm not actually getting a chance now to uh, cut sometimes when I get home from work uh, and that'll definitely be off the table once daylight savings here in New South Wales finishes uh, next month April April I think that finishes uh, so yeah but that's that's um, but I'm happy with how it's come back in the last week or so it's really just gone kaboom and that would be mostly because of that nice warm weather that finally came back after that period of cold. Okay, so I thought before we just throw it on there and you watch me spray some sort of chemical on a time lapse across my green, wondering, has he got anything in that? Is it just water? I mean, what is the point of all this? What is what is a wetter soil? What is Hydrolink Advance? I thought I'd just do two real simple demonstrations. I'll show you one on the green and that will that'll sort of explain, I guess, what surface tension is. Uh, and then I've got a little patch of garden that has some hydrophobic tendencies as well. So I'll show you two really quick experiments or demonstrations, probably a better term, two simple demonstrations to uh, illustrate what it actually does uh, and how it actually benefits you and the turf and how it can help to uh, reduce some of your water or make the water that you do put on your lawn that much more uh, more efficient in the sense that uh, it's getting down deeper where it needs to be. So let's have a look. I'll show you these little demonstrations and uh, hopefully that will help you get a better idea of what uh, what this stuff is designed to do and what it's all about. Right, I see that. All the water's just running across the top of the grass. It'll go in eventually, but see how it's running away? So that's the surface tension that's creating that effect. So. All that water, although it's slowly, see it's slowly going in, right, but it's basically sitting on top of the soil. And as you can see over here, um, it's just running away. So, uh, you can see there, yeah, it's going in slowly, but uh, there's there's gonna be a benefit from the uh, from the wetter soil. Uh, and as you can see, it's just, just sitting there, so, uh, I'll show you in the garden now, another example, and uh, then we'll treat it, and then we'll try a similar experiment again with the water and uh, see what results we get. Hopefully that'll give you an idea of what this stuff's all about. Okay, so let's have a look at it in a garden situation. Um, this is one of those imported garden mixes that you will buy from your uh, landscape supply company. Uh, so a lot of this stuff gets hydrophobic very quickly due to the organic matter breaking down and it gets a waxy film or waxy coating around the particles and this stuff sort of will break that down. So let's see how this goes. We'll put a bit of water on this here and uh, we'll see what happens. So straight away you can see how, see it's not really, it's just the water's not going anywhere. It's not, see that? It's not really wetting anything at all. Look, bone dry. 
it's just sitting on top slowly if you start working it'll mix in but as you can tell look that's you know look underneath there bone dry so this product will take care of that and uh, and hopefully uh, help your plants in your garden and your uh, lawn kick on and be as healthy as it can possibly be from that situation so now we'll rerun the experiment again but first of all we'll treat a little bit of the area uh, with some of the soil, soil wetter and uh, we'll try the uh, green again we'll put we'll put a bucket of water on the same patch of the green and see what happens to it uh, and we'll also do the same in the garden bed and uh, you'll get you'll, it gives you a really good idea of what this stuff's all about so let's crack on and get it done so for these two tests I've just mixed up um, some of the chemical or some of the surfactant into a watering can it's just going to water the two areas then we'll come back with our bucket so when I apply it on the whole green I'll spray it with a backpack sprayer uh, but for the moment for this test I'll just show you what it's like with the watering can and uh, yeah let's go I'll try and tip some on the area that I did treat and a bit of the area I didn't treat uh, I can see the area uh, and you might be able to it's right sort of top center of the screen it's just a little bit uh, brighter I guess than the than the area around it it may not come through on camera but uh, we'll put a little bit across and see if we can see a difference from where it's been and where it hasn't see it's soaking straight in where I didn't treat it it's running away again so if it I mean that's a lot of water to go on at once so it's always going to be an exaggerated experiment but it gives you an idea so the water over here is still running still running away and we come back over here and it's gone so let's see how that equates back in the garden situation uh, and see if we can get more of that sandy organic soil wet uh, when we add a bucket of water to it righto so i'll just grab the little fork and uh, we'll scratch around but look how it's already soaking straight in we'll be able to uh, scratch around in there and, and should not really find any any dry areas uh, after that application okay so you've had a bit of a I've shown you a bit of a demonstration of what it does let's now have a look at the bottle so you know exactly what it is that we're talking about and uh, we'll talk about some of its unique features and uh, why it is I've actually run with the hydrolink advanced product Okay, so here we go. This is the HydroLink Advance. Uh, it's a bit of a unique, unique uh, soil wetting agent because it does actually contain 5% uh, kelp extract, which is the seaweed, which is a seaweed solution. So it, it's kind of in there. It's an all-purpose version. Can be used on the gardens as well. So as you saw there earlier with my garden with the with the dry patch or the hydrophobic section, you can apply it to your gardens as well as your lawn. So it's an all-rounder. Uh, great for improving drought resistance and uh, root development with that with that kelp. Now application rates, uh, you're looking at 200 mils per 100 square metres mixed in a minimum of four litres of water in your, in your spray tank. You can apply it if you want to with one of those hose on packs like we used last week for the uh, sea sol and power feed. Uh, you can do it that way if you want. Today I'm going to use a backpack sprayer. I'm going to go over the green twice and we've got a bit of rain coming as you would have seen on the radar there. So the weather is cool enough for me not to have to worry about watering it straight in. The label does state that temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius, uh, irrigation immediately after application, but today I think would be early 20s Celsius, so I'm not going to worry. Uh, I'm gonna, I've got the rain coming, so I always like to work with the weather if I can. Uh, that's probably why I fast-tracked this, this episode to today and also because of the dry patches that are starting to show up, so we'll hook in and uh, treat it early and uh, yeah so all right let's mix this product up and get it out okay you might be wondering why i actually filled this up uh, with water first i didn't fill it right to the top with water i filled it up probably about three quarters to three quarters the amount that i want to put in here uh, basically especially with these sort of products especially these wetter soil type products they are they tend to get really foamy so if you put the product in the bottom without any water, then you put the hose on, you, you turn the hose on flat out, and uh, trying to fill it up as quick as you can. It's just gonna, a lot of these products will just foam, foam, foam straight up over the top. You won't really know how much water you've got in there. It just turns to a mess. It turns to disaster and you think, why do they even bother? So look, handy hint, uh, fill it up first, three quarters of the way up first, 
then um, then tip your product in, then top it off slightly, put some more water in, top it off slightly again, uh, and then if you want to, give it a bit of a shake, give it a bit of a mix to to um, to, to make sure that you've got your product properly mixed. This stuff is, is pretty good like that. Uh, it shouldn't give you too much concerns. Uh, so yeah, flies are here. Rain's probably 15, 20 minutes away now, so that's perfect timing for this. Let's top it off with water. We'll get it on the ground. Quick shake. Well, that's all I've got for you today, guys. Um, thanks for tuning in. I hope you found this uh, helpful. I hope you learned something from this. Uh, I really appreciate you guys tuning in every week. Uh, feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Uh, having looked the other day at the uh, statistics part of YouTube that you can see when you start putting these sort of videos up, and it shows me roughly uh, what countries people are coming from and it sort of shows me the top three uh, Australia being most of my viewers America being uh, second place and Great Britain coming in third I'd be a bit curious to see where you guys are watching from so just chuck in the comments whereabouts you guys are because I can sort of only work out how to see the sort of top three and then the rest comes in at other and that figure is quite large in the percentage so if you want to yeah chuck it in the comments where are you watching from um, I'd love to know actually Anyway guys, look, the rain has come right on schedule. Um, shame I can't order it like that every time I need it. Uh, look, once again guys, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again next week here on the Aussie Lawn.